This is Dr. Owen at Pierce College talking a little bit about the music that's going to be at the next Sinfonietta concert. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky was born in 1840 in Russia. The name of the town is on the slide there. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. You can have fun with that on your own. Um, his family is actually not a musical family. Unusual other composers like Mozart and Bach came from long lines of musicians. Uh, but Tchaikovsky's not. His father is a, a government um, military, I think, sort of a position. He has lessons as a child with the local piano teacher, and pretty soon they realize that Tchaikovsky's better than his teacher and needs somebody with a little more knowledge to teach him. So, uh, but aside from his musical education, just his education in general, uh, what's decided is that he should be sent away to the boarding school, which was common, I guess, for, for his section of society at that time. So at 10 years old, he's sent to the boarding school, um, has a real hard time with this, and particularly leaving mom, I guess, as they drop him off and, and, and drive away in the carriage. Uh, you know, the rest of the kids are fine. Tchaikovsky is running after the carriage, screaming and crying for mom. So has a really hard time with the, the split there and being sent off to school for a long period of time. But gets past that, moves on. His education prepares him for a job in society. He takes a job as a government clerk. Um, but he's still doing music. Music is something on the side, though. He's composing uh, and studying music. He manages to, again, on the side from his day job, uh, begin to study at uh, the conservatory with uh, Anton Rubinstein, who is a, a big name pianist and composer of the day. And, uh, and Rubinstein really encourages him to continue down this line of composition that there's really a, a future for him. Tchaikovsky's a cautious sort of person. Though. He won't quit his job as a clerk until he's sure that he can make a living as a musician. Seems smart. So he manages finally to get a, a position offered to him at the Moscow Conservatory. He'd been studying at the St. Petersburg, so now the Moscow, Moscow Conservatory, which is relatively new, says that they'll hire him, so he leaves his clerk job, and off he goes uh, as a composer. He stays there for a few years, teaching, uh, composing, becoming known for his music in society, uh, and as he's getting older, as a bachelor, he starts to feel the pressures in society at that time that he needs to marry. Um, even though he uh, doesn't want to, uh, it seems from accounts that all likely he was homosexual. And so he does marry a woman that's in the form of student, but it's a disaster. He ends up running away from it, um, divorcing. It's a, it's a big mess. And his solution is to run away to Europe. And so he goes touring about Europe, promoting his music, doing concerts, and living there for uh, several years. Um, to actually, to quite a bit of success. And so much so that back home in Russia, the Tsar says, uh, we want to recognize Tchaikovsky as one of our great national composers of Russia. Uh, and that really breaks that barrier that had been there for Tchaikovsky to feel like um, he can go home again, where he'd been really embarrassed because of the things that had happened before. Now he feels he can comfortably come home to Russia and, and not feel any repercussions from that. So he does so. He comes back to Russia, and this really seems to do him some good. He, his uh, productivity as a composer increases. He starts writing more. And as he gets there, he makes connections right away with people. And there's a chamber music society that wants him to write some music for them. And so he gets started writing a piece for six string instruments. Um, but he has to pause that for a little bit because he has Sleeping Beauty, the ballet that you may be familiar with is a big project that kind of takes over, and so he has to stop writing this chamber music piece for that. Uh, at the same time, there's also an opera that he's writing that's going on. So between these two major projects, he stops the chamber music for a while. Once that's all done, those two productions are underway, he comes back to the chamber music and finishes this piece for strings. So he titles it Souvenir uh, of Florence, perhaps from the time that he spent in Europe. I don't know, doesn't really specify why. He calls it that. It's a little unusual instrumentation. A normal string quartet, remember, is two violins, a cello, um, and a viola, or I should say two violins, viola, and cello from top to bottom. So we have more on the treble than we do on the, the bass in that normal quartet. This piece, uh, Tchaikovsky specifies two violins, two violas, and two celli. So that gives us this thicker sound because we have so much on that bass end of things. Now, of course, it's commonly like we're going to likely hear uh, with the Sinfonietta performed by a string orchestra, but still the writing is there's more parts for these low instruments, giving it this nice, rich, and dense texture and sound. Um, there are four movements as opposed to a concerto. This is more like a, a symphony with four movements. First one is fast, allegro con spirito. I left the O off on the slide there. Um, 
kind of a fun beginning. It starts as if it's already been going and just suddenly we started to hear it. Let's listen to the beginning of it. I'll skip ahead here in a bit, but you'll notice there's uh, these kind of light rhythms, and there's places where you'll get one string part playing a theme and then another one right after it. Lots of this little imitation bouncing back and forth of, of motives and ideas. And then towards the end, that kind of builds up and becomes this very intense ending to the movement. Let's skip ahead and listen to some of it in the middle. <laughs> themes bouncing back and forth between parts. Let's see if we can find a little bit of the end here. So we hear the building and building. That gives us an idea of the first movement. The second movement, just like um, is typical for symphonies and concertos, is slower, lyrical, um, more peaceful second movement. The title, uh, Adagio Cantabile e con Moto, means it's slow but um, singing and with motion. Uh, it has quite a full textured introduction, big thick sound, and then a grand pause. This means the musicians have in their, in their score uh, GP or grand pause notated which means it doesn't have to be exactly a certain length. You kind of let it pause for however long the conductor feels, which often is adjusted depending on the acoustic. So if you're performing in a live hall where the sound might ring a little longer, you might let that hang a little longer. A drier hall might move on a little quicker. So uh, it'll be different probably for each performance. And then after that grand pause, we really start to hear that lyrical melody that we expect. Grand pause. So then we get this kind of chuck chuck in the lower strings and the lyrical melody over the top. On to the third movement, marked allegro moderato, so fast but moderately so. Uh, we would expect, if it were a symphony in the fourth movement, to have a, a triple meter dance, a minuet or, s or a scherzo, something like that, that has a one, two, three, one, two, three. Instead, we get a, a duple meter, something that feels more of a one, two, one, two, and a minor key, kind of this mysterious sound. But at the same time, it doesn't get too heavy. It stays a little bit light, like a, a dance or a minuet would. Let's hear a little bit of this one. A little taste of that one. Now on to our last movement, marked Allegro con brio e vivace, means uh, fast, Allegro fast, uh, with brightness, and then even faster. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be fast. Underlying kind of rushing constant uh, figures underneath really kind of give it this driving energy, uh, but at the same time he gives it these long, beautiful, sweeping melodies over the top. Part of the genius of Tchaikovsky's writing in this is that ability to have the the energetic churning underneath 
and yet still have the, the melodies that we love Tchaikovsky for, those beautiful melodies at the same time. Here's a little bit of that last movement. So if you can hear that in there, there's those little da 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 constant little churning notes giving that forward drive underneath. Lots of fun for that last movement. So I uh, hope you enjoy the music. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening.